going to take you now over to Newport News, Virginia, where police are discussing the school shooting that sent one teacher to the hospital. The alleged shooter, a six-year-old first grader. Let's listen. Well, good evening. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, and I, I know there was some question about, as we, as we go forward and share some information today, I know there was some question about when we would deliver uh, some remarks and comments. I think that's important to our community. Right, but we wanted to make sure that we took some time and gathered some information. We had some good information to deliver and clear some things up. So uh, my name is Steve Drew, I'm the Chief of Police here in Newport News, and I will tell you that this is an unprecedented situation that we're dealing with, a six-year-old. It is unprecedented. So there are some nuances here. Friday, last Friday was a hard day for our city, for all of us, and there were a lot of heroes. I will tell you that uh, Saturday afternoon, I was able to meet with family, and I was able to meet, I was humbled, but I was able to meet with Abigail Zwerner. Abigail is a 25-year-old teacher, and she is a trooper. She is a hero. I talked with her, so before I talk today, I'm gonna go through the timeline, establish that a little bit for you, talk about our officer response, what happened while we were there, and where we're at in our investigation. But please remember that we are only three days into this that there's a lot of things that still need to happen. And I'll talk about that as we go forward. But there are some questions that will be, we will not be able to answer because of where we're at with, with this investigation. When I met with Abigail's family on Saturday, and they took me up to her room, she asked me, first question, do you know how my students are? She was worried about them. And then today, when I went back to share with her that we were gonna hold this press conference today, she again asked me, do you know how my students are? And that touched me, her family and her mother. Abigail wanted me to tell you all, but primarily her students and her parents of her students, that she is in stable condition, and that she is thankful for the thoughts and prayers that have gone out to her, to people that have reached out not only here locally, across our state and across our nation. She is very, very appreciative of the support that she's getting and continues to get. So I just want to establish with you a, a brief timeline. Last Friday uh, at Rich Neck Elementary School on January the 6th, at 1.59 a call came in and advised that a teacher had been shot and there was no other, there was no, uh, other information that came forward. Officers were dispatched at 2 o'clock p.m. Uh, personnel uh, to Rich Neck Elementary. And any time we have a situation where there is a shooter or they believe a possible active shooter, officers are gonna come from all over. So there were officers from different, uh, different areas there. At 2.04, two sheriff deputies arrived at the school and entered the classroom where this shooting took place. And I talk, we'll talk a little bit shortly here that it was not a, an active shooter going on throughout the school. Everything happened in one classroom. Two sheriff deputies entered at 2.04 and about eight to 10 seconds behind them, two officers entered. When they entered the room, they found a, a six-year-old child that was being physically restrained by a school employee. The child became a little combative, actually struck the school employee that was retain, restraining him, and officers then took control of him and escorted him out of the building, placed him in a police car with an officer inside and outside that vehicle. Once that had occurred, there was a systematic uh, ev uh, evacuation of rooms and hallways for safety, so we still weren't sure exactly what all we had at that point. On the timeline, I wanna go back and talk about the other response. As we said, at 2.04, deputies and officers responded. At 2.06, med medics arrived at the school. At 2.07, the medics were cleared by officers to enter the building, that it, that room was safe where we had someone uh, had been injured. At 2.09, they made contact with Abigail, and at 2.11, she was transported to a local hospital where she's currently undergoing treatment. And again, I, if I didn't state earlier, she is still listed in stable condition, and I had a good conversation with her today. We talked a little bit about when the officers arrived, the young man was taken into custody and escorted out of the building. And officers responded then and began to put a plan together quickly to evacuate the hallways, the classrooms in a systematic order. But remember, we're dealing with elementary kids, right? And I will tell you, I was touched by the way that those officers interacted with those kids as they moved them from the hallway to the gymnasium. The faculty and staff there, and I'm not just talking about teachers. 
It was heroic, the way I saw them take care of those young people. Officers and faculty members were, were t took the students into the gymnasium. That's where they would stay until they were reunited with their family. The individuals that were in the classroom were taken to the library where they were held there, kept there with detectives, a couple of teachers, and eventually some school counselors. When they arrived, we escorted them safely to that area as we continued to clear the building so that they could be, the professionals could be with, with, with our young people, with students. We talked about detectives and, and counselors that were, that were escorted there to make sure that we had professionals with the individuals that had been in that room. Uh, once the building was safe, forensics entered the classroom and processed the crime scene. Uh, I wanna share with you what we recovered there. Uh, one spent shell casing, a backpack, a cell phone, and a nine millimeter, nine millimeter Taurus firearm was recovered. The firearm was recovered close to the student's desk where the shooting occurred. Mrs. Zwerner was providing class instruction when the six-year-old child uh, displayed a firearm, pointed it, pointed it at her and fired one round. There was no physical uh, struggle or fight. She was providing instruction to her class. There was one round fired. Abigail uh, took a defensive position. And what I'm sharing with you is because she has allowed me to share it. She took a defensive position where she raised her hand. The round went through her hand, exited the rear of her hand, and into her upper chest. And that's as far as I want to go with that. I'm not, I'm not a physician and, and the complications there, but uh, that was the injury as she, as she leaned back and took that, took that round. She suffered a gunshot wound, um, but she was still able to get all of her students out of that classroom. From the video surveillance we have of the, of the uh, hallway, you can see the students running out of that classroom across the hall into, and I would, I'm estimating about 17 to 20 students out of that classroom across all into other classrooms. Mrs. Warner was the last person to leave that class. She made a right turn and started down the hallway and then she stopped and she turned around she turned around to make sure that every one of those students was safe. She made her way down to the uh, administration office. We would later find out that she was uh, given first aid as dispatchers talked to individuals who had made phone calls and they took care of her uh, through communications until the paramedics got, got with her. Several, several faculty members were interviewed uh, at the scene Others, there will be follow-up interviews. There will be follow-up interviews with, with Abigail. The students that were there, we will work, we will work with uh, child psychologists who are, are trained to interview children. We'll work with them and want to talk about, about what they saw in their accounts. Now, once I, once I arrived, myself and, and, and other officers, I was, got a quick brief assessment of the situation, what we had, and I wanted to get out as quick as we could to our, our community and our parents, right, that we did not have an active uh, situation, the individual was in custody, and, and that there was no more longer threat. I tried to explain a little bit about how children were being moved to the gymnasium. We'll work with our, our school board members uh, and, and faculty and staff there, our sheriff deputies that came all together and we had a systematic process of releasing a child to their parent. They were identified and we got them back, back together. You can imagine there was some frustration by parents wanting their children back, and I can understand that. Uh, myself and, and the mayor uh, worked the, the line, those parents lined up, calming them down, reassuring that their students were okay, but you saw tears and frustration, anxiety, and I appreciate that, sir. Because in those situations, what we have to do is try to keep people calm because they're just unsure of what they had. And as we reunited, as I saw uh, school employees uh, walking students and officers walking students back to their families, I saw tears and smiles on both sides. Almost in that, that moment of seeing our the fire department, the sheriff's department, the police officers, school board members, school officials working together to reunite those children and loved ones and the care that they took for those young people, it was amazing. Laughing, supporting, holding their hands, 
talking to them. I saw children in the gym that were making fun of officers and officers making fun of them, just bonding and trying to make that situation that we're dealing with the best that we could. They remembered how important those young people are in that time of, they may never forget. The parents of the six-year-old child were contacted by, uh, by the police department and asked us to meet, asked them to meet us back at police headquarters. They did so. And at that point is where we interviewed uh, the child and his mother. And we determined that the firearm was in the residence where they lived and the child had obtained that firearm, placed it in his backpack and brought it to school. He was brought to school that day by his, by his mother uh, later that morning. The six year old child um, uh, brought to school, like, like we said there, and it was determined we wanted to know about that firearm. It's one of the things that we did in our press conference there. It was one of the questions I had. Where did that firearm come from? The firearm was legally purchased uh, uh, by, the, by the child's mother out of uh, York County. Uh, detectives, so after we had this information, like I said, this is unprecedented. We're dealing with a six-year-old. Detectives talk with human services and child protective services, our Commonwealth Attorney's Office. I've talked to Mr. Gwynn several times as late as last night and, and this afternoon. Um, the Community Service Board, which, is a, which addresses mental and behavioral health. Uh, due to the age of the child, we made these conversations, these contacts and conversations to seek guidance on possible services because none of us have a lot of information dealing with something like this. Based on this conversation, an emergency custody order was initiated by detectives and the six-year-old child was transported to a local hospital where he was evaluated. The CSB uh, Community Service Board determined that a temporary detention order would be obtained from a magistrate and the child is currently receiving treatment at a medical facility. Now, the department will continue to conduct this investigation, which will consist of a lot of follow-up interviews. We want to talk to the uh, individuals that were in that classroom with help of a, a child psychologist. We want to meet with uh, human services or child protective services to see if there's any, action, any interaction or any cases that they have with the family or the child. And we also want to work with Dr. Parker and his staff, which have been extremely, extremely forthcoming with information of any issues they may have dealing with the, uh, the child's behavior or any behavioral issues or concerns. I'd like to, to, to reiterate, and I said that night, I just want to reiterate that this shooting was not accidental. It was intentional. Now, I believe, and I told her today, I believe that Ms. Zorner, Abigail, that she saved lives on Friday. I cannot be more, more impressed with the faculty and staff of the school. I can't be more impressed with those children, the way they exited the hallways and went with instruction, the officers and deputies who talked to them, some holding their hands as they walked through, and the number of, of school employees that came in and, and, and we escorted to the gymnasium and even to the library to work with those young children. And I also want to thank all of our federal partners, state and local officials who've called and asked if there's any support that you need from the, from the governor's office uh, all over the state, but primarily around our surrounding jurisdictions. Is there anything you need? And I believe that's because of the relationship that we have. So as we go forward, that, those are the, the conversations we'll be having as we continue to put this investigation together. There, there are uh, some, a lot of things that we need to, to to continue to do. We're only three days into this investigation. But I just wanted to share with you a little bit about our response, what we had, a little bit of the timeline, what was recovered, uh, and what we have done at this point and where we are as we go as we go forward to have the conversations with uh, our Commonwealth Attorney and the CSB Board on the, on the best. You've been watching officials from Newport News, Virginia, provide an update on the school shooting Friday that sent teacher Abigail Warner to the hospital. The police chief says she is in stable condition, but at a time when school shootings have become all too commonplace, what makes this story different and even more tragic, the student holding the gun was just six years old. And the police chief emphasized, quote, it was intentional. We also heard the police chief say that in the video surveillance that they were able to view uh, of what happened, it is clear that in his view, Abigail's runner saved lives, that she made sure the children were able to leave that classroom uh, and that she was the last one out of that classroom after this happened. He also said that this firearm 
was legally purchased by the child's mother. Mm -hmm. The child is currently receiving treatment, we learned, at a medical facility.